Hello. My name is Keshwani. That's A E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the one I'm holding in my hand. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 152 and today is our day number 42, lesson number 42. On the top of the page, on the top of the page 152, you must have the book in front of you. You will find a graph on top of page 142. I'm going to reproduce that graph and I could have actually produce the graph ahead of time and then start video videotaping the thing but I prefer to do it in front of you uh, because you will get something out of it I'm going to reproduce the graph point by point okay so here we go I'm going to we're going to well let's uh, word comes to my mind here christen what does it mean to christen I'm digressing here for, for a second what does it mean to christen christen has two meaning it has uh, the word has a literal meaning which means to baptize somebody uh, in the in the Christianity in the Christianity faith, and metaphor metaphorically simply means to christen something or somebody it means to give somebody a, or something a name. So I'm going to christen these points so that we can talk about them. I'm, 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 as I'm speaking here, I'm looking at the list of words that I've covered in my vocabulary lessons, day 63. Just type in vocab. Day 63, and you will learn this word Christian along with all the other words. In case you're curious what, what I'm talking about here, just like you're watching this math video right now, I've also put together some videos which will help you with your vocabularies for the for the GMAT, for the preparation of GMAT, GRE, or SAT, whatever what have you there, whatever the, whatever it is that you're preparing for. But having a decent vocabulary is a must. Uh, it is the most important ingredient and improving your score in the English portion of the exam. Anyway, enough said. So I'm going to christen this point as I, as I go along. So that, so that, as I said, so that we can talk about that. So first one we have is the point A. I'm, I'm calling it point A, which is 3, 2. So let's draw it here. 3, 2. I need the room. I shouldn't have put that bloody thing up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's in my way. I don't like it. 3, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, so 3, 2, let's call it A. But that is not what I have in my notes here. The first point is not 3, 2, it is negative 3, 2, negative 3 and 2. One, two, three, one, two. So that's your A. Then we have point B, which is negative two, zero. This is the work that we're doing here is necessary work in order for you to prepare, in order for you to understand the question, what is going to follow. Negative two and zero. Negative two and zero, right on the y-axis. Right on the x-axis rather. There is your point B. This is your point A. Then we have negative, negative 1 and a positive 2. A negative 1 and a positive 2 is right about here, point C. Then we have point D, which is 0 and a positive 1. So x is 0 and y is positive 1. So it looks like it comes down. Does it come down? Yep, that's point D. Then we have point E, which is positive 1 and a 0. So x is 1 and y is 0, it crosses the x-axis at point E. And then we have point F, which is 2 and positive 1. So 2 and positive 1, it goes up again, what the hell? It goes up again, alright, so be it. And then we have point G, which is 3 and 1, 3 and 1, 3 and 1. It looks like it stays flat, flat. 
it stays flat. Yes, it's my accent. So let's combine this, let's join this point so we can see the, the shape of the graph that, that is emerging. And then, and only then, we'll be able to answer the question that is being asked. So here we have three A, B, C. Then we have D, E. Then we have F and a G. This is what this is what the graph looks like. This is what is given to us. No, let's answer the question. The question simply is, what is the value of what is the value of f of negative one, f of f of negative one. This is. Don't worry about how it is read right now. Let me move that thing up, up there a little bit so it's out of the way. Before we worry about the entire thing, we have to do it in steps. We're going to first do the inside part, then we're going to worry about the outside part. Let's look at what this means. Let's first understand what this means. It is read as it is read as f of negative one. F of negative one. What does it mean? F of negative one. If someone says f of negative one, what does it mean? It means I'm good. now we're going to translate it. This is how the mathematician read it. This is how the mathematician read it. This part right here. This is this is how it is read. It is read as it is read as f of negative 1. This is how mathematicians read this part and now we're going to write the English translation of it. What does it mean? It means what is what is the value of this function which is another way of saying what is the value of this graph of this function when x equals negative 1 what is the value of this function, which is same as saying, what is the value of the graph? What is the value of the graph? What is the value of this function, which is same as saying, what is the value of this graph? And it is also same as, what is the value of, what is the value of y? There are three different ways this thing is said. You see, I'm gonna. I, I I can feel it. I I can I can sense this already right now. It's, it's coming on. Once in a while, if you've been watching my videos in the past, you know that once in a while I have this uncontrollable urge to break into a sermon. And I can see, I can feel the sermon coming on. I'm looking for the cap of this bloody thing, so I can put it away. I can feel the sermon coming on. Mathematics is a language, and just like any other language. Sometimes we have two, three, five, ten different ways of saying the same thing. For example, he passed away, he died, he's deceased, he's gone to meet the maker, whatever that means, he's deceased, he has kicked the bucket if you want to be polite. All of these statements basically mean the same thing, that means a person has ceased to exist, a person is no more. I'm saying the same exact thing several different ways. Exact same thing, exact same logic applies in the language of mathematics, it's a language. And just like any other language, sometimes we have two, three, five, twenty different ways of saying the same exact thing, depending on the person, how the person prefers to speak. There are three different ways this can be read. This, this tells you, right here, f of negative one, this is how, this is how it is read, f of negative one, and it means what it means can be stated in three different ways. What it what is saying is that what is the value, what is the value of what is the value of this function, this function that you see here, when x equals when x equals negative one. Well, x x is negative one where here is negative one. When x equals negative one, the value of this function right here is this. We're talking about point C. Voila. So the value of this function when x equals negative 1 is 2. You see right here is 1 and there is 2. So the answer to this question is, what is the value of this function when x equals negative 1? The answer is, it is positive 2. The value of this function is positive 2. Another way, another way we could have 
interpreted this uh, this statement uh, the way we could have interpreted this statement this question what is the f of negative 1 which is same as saying what is the value of this graph well the value of this graph is right here 1 2 when x equals negative 1 the value of the graph is 2 other way we could have interpreted the same this uh, the question f of negative 1 what is f of negative 1 which is same as saying what is the value of y three different ways we can interpret this question this graph, the y, the function, they all mean the same thing. And the answer is positive too. So now we have done the first part. Now we're going to move on to the second part, which is this question. What is, what is the value of f of f of negative 1? Well, we already know what f of negative 1 is. f of negative 1, f of negative 1, we just found out is positive 2. So we're just going to substitute positive 2 for f of negative 1. And now the question is, what is f of positive 2? What is f of positive 2 is same as asking what is the value of this function or what is the value of this graph or what is the value of y when x equals positive 2? Positive 2. Right here. So again we go to the graph and we ask ourselves what is the value of the graph when x equals positive 2. Here is 1, here is 2. When x equals positive 2, this does not seem right, something has gone berserk. When x equals positive 2, I have made a mistake in drawing this thing. Oh, I've lost it. I have made a mistake. We have e, where, where is e? 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. And then we have f which is positive 2 and 1, positive 2, 1, 2 and 1. See this f should have been here. I'm, I'm going to have to, oh, what an anticlimax. This f belongs on top of 2, not top of 3. This is 1. Let me put down numbers so you can see it. 1, 2, 3. This f, the way I drew it, the way I have drawn f, it is x equals 3, y equals 1. It is supposed to be 2 and 1. So I need to pick up this f. I'm going to pick it up and move it to the left one unit because I made a the technical term for those of you who are anxious to learn it is boo boo. So let's move the f and the g one unit to the left. Voila. F and the g. Voila. There is your f. And there is your g. So now the final question was what is the value of the function? What is the value of the function when x equals positive 2? What is the value of this function? What is the value of this graph? What is the value of y when x equals positive 2? This part I'm doing here, positive 2. Right here is what we're doing here, positive 2. Right here, the second part. So when x equals positive 2, right here is 1, 2. When x is positive 2, y is 1. We're talking about point f. When x is 2, y is 1. Well, there you go. That's your answer. That's your final answer. The question is, question was, what is the value of this function when x equals positive 2? When x equals positive 2, the value of the function is 1. That's it. We're done. The answer is positive 1. And therefore, the correct answer is the answer choice D. D as in David. Or, like we made a mistake here, instead of putting F on top of 2, I put the F on top of 3. So you could say D as in damn it. But anyway, we're done. That was it. But they are asking, instead of simply asking you what is the value of this function when x equals positive 2, they ask us in two steps. First, we have to figure out the value of the function when x equals negative 1. That's the first part. What's the value of this function when x equals negative 1? When x equals negative 1, here is a negative 1. When x equals negative 1, the value of the function is 2. One, up to here is 1, from 0 to 1, and 2. So x equals, the value of the function is 2. Once we find the value of the function when x equals negative 1, which turns out to be positive 2, then we substitute that positive 2 in that in, the, in, the, in this part right here. This, this, this quantity right here in the parentheses, 
equals positive 2. So now the new question is what is the value of the function when x equals positive 2 and we just found out that it is positive 1. That's what. That's what it is. Uh, I will see you tomorrow on day number one more than today, uh, 43. Okay, bye now.